All right, Swifters, welcome back. This is Prof G, and in this video, we're going to show you how to add inspiring images to your app so that when your app shows up, you'll click on show message and boom, not only are you going to show you are awesome, but you're also going to show the awesome image of your choice. Now, this is going to give us a chance to learn about several things, including the Xcode asset catalog, where we can store things like images and sounds and colors. We'll also learn about the UI image view class, the UI image class, how we can take a file in the assets catalog and convert it into an image that our code can use and we'll learn about the content mode for UI image views. So with that said, let's get at it. Now, as we complete the UR Awesome app, in the next few videos, we're gonna need several images. Now you can use your own images. They can be JPEGs, they can be PNGs, but do make sure that they're named image zero through image nine. Image should be spelled all in lowercase, and there shouldn't be a space between the word image and the number. Now, if you don't want to create your own images right now, you're welcome to use mine. I've created a set of images that you can find in this Google Drive at bit.ly slash swift awesome images. And that's an upper camel case. Now, my Google Drive is currently showing the images in list view, but if you click up here in thumbnail view, you'll be able to see what they look like. I really love adventure travel. So these are just photographs that I've taken while traveling and I've modified the photographs with some goofy, some might say corny inspiration phrases. But I'm going to click back here on list view, click on this top image, hold down the shift key, Click on the last image, right click and select download. Google Drive will zip these up into a single file and then I'm prompted to select a save location. And I'm gonna download these into my Swift project folder. That's the You Are Awesome folder that's on my desktop. So I'll double click to enter this first You Are Awesome folder, not the second one, and click save. Then I'll minimize my browser. I'll go into my You Are Awesome project folder, find this unusually named zip file, double click it to unzip or uncompress the file, I don't need the zip file, so I'm just going to drag that into the trash. And if I double click on this folder that was just decompressed, I can see that I've got all of those images, image zero through image nine. And if you're using your own images and you've named them properly, this is where you can rejoin the lesson. So how do we add all these images to our project? I'm going to click on the back button in the finder and I'm going to double click on my Xcode proj file so that I launch my you are awesome project in Xcode. And I'll set things up. I'll double click on the Xcode title bar to go full screen. I'll hide the attributes inspector. I'll click on the X to get out of assistant editor mode and I'll hide the debug area. Now we're gonna store these images in what's called the assets catalog. And if we look down into the project navigator, we see that there's a thing that looks like a blue folder that says assets.xc assets. Click on this and this brings up the assets catalog. And this is a holding place where you can store things like the icon set for your apps icons, images, sounds, special colors. We're gonna use this to store all of our images. So let's drag our images inside here. I'm gonna go back to the finder. I'm gonna double click on that folder that I just downloaded with all the images in it. Click on my first image, hold down the shift key, click on the last image. Now I'll click and I'll start to drag those images over. And I'm just gonna let go of these images inside this area that looks like the document outline just below where it says app icon. And that's gonna copy all of these images into the assets catalog of my project. And if you scroll down, you'll see we have images. Now this empty two Xbox and three Xbox next to each of the image give you an opportunity to add an even higher resolution image, but the one X images that we've got in here are gonna be just fine for our project. Now I'll click on main storyboard, but you know what? We don't need that folder where we drag the images over. Those images are already in our project. So I'm gonna to return to the finder. I'm gonna click on the folder that I decompressed from that zip file that I downloaded from the web. And I'm just gonna throw that in the trash. And so now let's get back into Xcode and we'll see how we can add an image to our app. Now remember, we got our text message in here by using a user interface object called a label. Well, we're gonna add an image to our app by adding another user interface object called an image view. And we can find the image view in the library. So let's click on the plus icon to bring up the object library. And we could scroll in here to try to find image view, but there are so many objects in here. I'm just gonna use the object filter. So I'm gonna type in the word image. I see image view. I'm gonna click on image view and drag it over and I'll position it here so that the upper left-hand corner is just at the left margin and just at the space margin below my show message button. And now I'll move my cursor over the handle on the selected image view that's in the lower right-hand corner. And when I found the spot that turns into an X with these diagonal arrows in it, I'm gonna click and hold down the mouse and drag the handle down to position the end of the image view in these margins in the lower right hand corner of my view controller. Nice. And now let's take a look at the attributes for this image view. So with image view selected, let's go over to the attributes inspector, click on that downward pointing arrow, and we see a bunch of different attributes in here. We wanna focus in on two of these. One is image and the other is content view. Now, if you click on the drop down arrow next to image, we can see all of the images that we just downloaded into our assets catalog. 
So I'm gonna click on image zero and hello friendly ostrich. We see the image is looking pretty good here, but I also wanna point out some of the options that we'll see under content mode. Now, most of the time, the ones we need to pay attention to are just these top three, scale to fill, aspect fit, and aspect fill. Now the one that's selected by default is aspect fit. And what aspect fit does is it makes sure that the image is not distorted and the entire image is shown within the image view. The image view is this container that holds the image. Now if the image view, the container, has the same width to height ratio as the image itself, it'll look like the image fills up the container. Now if the shape of the image view creates a rectangle that's taller than the rectangle that holds the image itself, then the image view will have blank space at the top and the bottom of the image. Now if the rectangle for the image view is wider than the rectangle for the image itself, you'll see the blank space on the side. Now let's put the image view back where it was and demonstrate aspect fill. Now aspect fill will also preserve the aspect ratio so that the image doesn't look distorted, but it will fill up the entire image view with the image. Now the way this works is if you have a squat image view container, instead of showing the blank space on the left and right side, it'll fill the image out to the left and right side of the image view, but it'll cut off the top and bottom of the image. Now if the image view container has a taller aspect ratio than the image itself, it's going to cut off the image on the left and the right. Now I'll reset the image view so I can show you scale to fit. What scale to fit does is it makes sure that the image takes up the entire image view container, but it will distort the image. And whoa, look at this, it'll make it either squat or skinny. And now that we know the difference between content modes, let's go back to aspect fit. And with aspect fit selected, why don't we go ahead and build and run? So I'm gonna do that on an iPhone SE and click on build and run. I'll speed up the video. And here we go, come on and launch and whoa, fabulous, that's you, and you are fabulous. The image is looking good, hello friendly ostrich. If we take a look down in the console area, we see that we still have this message that says view did load has run. And you know what we can do is we can get rid of that print statement and the other print statement. I'll just adjust the size of my console here. If we click on show message, we do see that the label changes to you are awesome, which is what we had before. We see this other message prints down in the console too. Let's get rid of both of those. And you know what else I wanna do is I wanna make sure that we've got nothing in the text attribute of the label. And also, can we set it up so that there's nothing in the image attribute of the image view. So that when we click on show message, we'll both show a text message that says you are awesome and we'll show our first awesome image. So let's get back into Xcode. We'll click on viewcontroller.swift and in view did load, I can delete both the print statement and the message label.txt statement. I need neither of those. And down in message button pressed, I'm gonna delete the print statement here as well. But I am gonna keep my message label.txt set to you are awesome because whenever I click on the message button pressed, I want message label.txt, which is blank, to be filled in with you are awesome. And so now let's click over in main storyboard. Now remember, our message label is going to show up as empty at first because we have nothing in the text attribute for message label. So now let's also clear out the image property of the image view. Now, if I click on image view and take a look in the attribute inspector, I can see that this ostrich image is image zero, but I can backspace over the file name image zero, press the return key, and then my image view will have no default image set when it loads, it'll be blank. So now that our image view is blank, just like our message label is, let's go back over to viewcontroller.swift, give ourselves a little bit more room on the bottom and the side, and we'll modify message button pressed so that not only are we gonna show you are awesome in our message label, but we'll also show that image, image zero, in our image view. Now, in order for this to work, we actually need to create an IB outlet for that image view. The reason why is if we wanna write something in the code right now to refer to the image view, the code doesn't know that the image view exists. So you see how we have an IB outlet for message label up here? We need to do the same thing for that image view. And the way we create our IB outlets is we get into assistant editor mode. So we're in viewcontroller.swift, hold down the option key, click on main storyboard. Now we've got these two files side by side. I'm gonna show my document outline here. I could control drag over from image view, but I also wanna show you can control drag over any of these objects that are listed in the document outline. It's just another technique you can use to create an IB outlet or an IB action. And it's good to know about both of them. Control dragging on objects in the document outline can actually be really useful if you've got a complicated view controller with lots of objects and you wanna make sure that you're clicking on the correct one. So I'm gonna hold down the control key, click on image view, and drag over to create the outlet. I'll put this right underneath the message label. This creates an outlet. I'm just gonna name it image view in lower camel case, and we can see that it's type UI image view. I'll click on connect. Now the line that Xcode wrote for us looks almost identical to the message label line. The only thing that's different is the name of the variable and the fact that the type is UI image view. And if I move my cursor over the solid circle to the left of image view, I can see on interface builder, it highlights that image view. And if I move the cursor over the solid circle that's next to message label, it highlights message label. Everything's connected up. 
Great. Now back in message button pressed, I'm going to add a line right underneath this message label.text line that's going to set the image view. And watch what happens when I start to type in image view. Because I created an IB outlet, Xcode knows that it exists. After typing in just the word image, I see the name image view and code completion. I see to the left that it's of type UI image view. That's the same type that we see up in IB outlet. And to the left, we see the V that indicates it's a variable, which means we can change its contents. So I'm going to press enter to accept this. And so now let's type a period to see if we can find something in dot notation. And sure enough, if we scroll down here, we're going to find that there is a property called image. And image is of type UI image, and that's a variable. And if we move our cursor down on top of image, we see that the description says the image displayed in the image view. That's exactly what we want. Also, be sure to pay attention to the fact that this is a UI image. That's going to be important for us in just a second. Press enter, accept it. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. We can't just put in that file name image zero in here and have that equal the image. Because if we put the file name into quotes, we would be assigning a string to an image. That's not gonna work. But remember, when we typed in dot notation, we saw code completion for this image property. It said that it was of type UI image. Now remember back to when we added a color, we typed in UI color. Well, if we type in UI image, sure enough, code completion knows about something called UI image. Now look at the description down here. It says that it's an object that manages image data in your app. Also notice the purple C to the left of UI image. That means UI image is a class. Now a class is a kind of blueprint for creating objects. So just as we said class view controller was like this blueprint to be able to create new view controller screens, well this UI image, if we refer to this into our code, this invokes this blueprint so that we can create a new image that our code can use. So how do we create a new image object that our code can use from this blueprint UI image? Well the way we typically do this is we start with an open parenthesis and we'll see code complete comes up with a bunch of different options in here and we're going to ignore most of these but the one that we're going to use most often is this one that says named colon string now if we move our cursor down to highlight it says it creates an image object from a specified named asset this will go into the assets catalog grab the file with the name that we're going to pass in as the string turn it into an image that our code can use and then because we've got an equal sign to the left we're going to slap it into the image property of our image view so let's go ahead and press enter to accept this. We see that Xcode types in most of this stuff. It simply highlights string. So we're gonna type in a double quote. Xcode very nicely types in the other double quote, puts the cursor in between those two double quotes. And what we want to do is we want to type in the name of the image to use. Just to remind us, if we go into the assets catalog, we can see that that first image was called image zero. Now you always want to make sure that you type the name in exactly as it's spelled in the assets catalog. You can even double click on this and copy it and paste it in. So that's nice to make sure that you don't have any typos. So we have lowercase image, no space between the word image and the number zero. That is a number zero. It's not a capital O. And since I copied, I'm just going to paste the name in between the double quotes. So this is it, we did it. So I'm gonna press the stop button, close my main storyboard and press play to build and run. I'll speed up the video. We see our app with a blank label and a blank image view, but if we click on show message, ho ho, we get the you are awesome message and we get the friendly ostrich that's praising you. So congratulations coder, you now know how to put an image in your app and work with it programmatically. Don't forget to commit and push to GitHub. More coming up, keep at it.